All right, YouTube, we're back talking about Hohmann transfers, which is a maneuver where we transfer a satellite in a circular orbit of one radius to a circular orbit of some other radius. Now there's quite a bit to calculate and understand in a Hohmann transfer. Now whether that's looking at the change in velocity at the two different burn points, which I talked about here in my introduction to Hohmann transfers, or looking at the change in mass of the rocket required to produce these changes in velocity, which I also talked about here in my discussion of the rocket equation. But today what I want to do is solve for the time it's going to take this satellite to transfer from this inner radius to this outer radius or outer orbit. Oh, look at that. I made a little mark here. That's going to bother me. It's probably going to bother a few of you out there, but folks, we're just going to have to live with it. Sorry. Now, the reality here is coming up with the time is actually pretty simple, so long as you realize we can apply Kepler's third law to this elliptical orbit. Now, for a circular orbit, Kepler's third law is actually pretty easy to derive. You can see me do that here. The catch is, what we're worried about is this Hohmann transfer, which is elliptical. So, Kepler's third law needs to be written not for a circular orbit, but for an elliptical orbit. where we simply replace the radius of circular orbit for the length of what's called the semi-major axis of this ellipse. Now the semi-major axis of an ellipse is half the distance along this long axis of the ellipse. See the distance from here to here is what we call the major axis. Now the semi-major axis is simply half of the major axis. And the important thing to recognize for this ellipse, which is traced out by the Hohmann transfer, is that the major axis is actually the radius of our inner orbit plus the radius of the outer orbit. So adding the two radii together, then dividing them by two, will give us the semi-major axis, which we call A. And that can be substituted up here into Kepler's third law. Now realize, this expression of Kepler's third law doesn't tell us the total time for a Hohmann transfer. What it does is it tells us the period of orbit if we were to allow the satellite to go not only up to the second burn, but to continue all the way back through for one full orbit in this elliptical path. But a Hohmann transfer is simply half of that orbit. So if we can solve for this period, all we need to do is take that time and divide it by two. And that'll give us the total time for the Hohmann transfer. So assuming the time to make these two delta v's or two burns occur is relatively small, this equation will tell us the time between one burn and the next. So I hope you found this useful, and on that note, that's all for now.